This is the Alpine A110, and it's effectively a French Lotus Elise, so a two-seater lightweight sports car. Now, Alpine is owned by Renault, and I'll explain a bit about it. You see, it first started making cars back in 1955, and then in the 60s, it made this, the A110. So that's the old one, and there's the new one. Look, the design is very, very faithful, isn't it? Now, Alpine's last car was actually in 1995. It was this, the A610. So this car's rivals, of the Porsche 718 Cayman because it starts from £46,000, which means it's quite a lot of money. Another rival is the Alpha 4C. Hopefully this car is nowhere near as disappointing as that one. Now, one thing about the price of this is that actually it also puts into the same bracket pretty much as this, the Audi TT RS, because with a car wow discount, you can get six grand off one of these. So similar money to this Alpine. Now to see how much money you can save on a new car, click on the pop out banner in the top right hand corner of the screen to get a car wow. I really love the look of this car. It's just sporty yet cute. It's a great, great design. It's not overly fussy either. I like features such as this. Look, you've got the intake there for the engine because it's mid-mounted. You've got the trickler flag there to celebrate that it's French. It's a beautiful, beautiful little car. And it is little, so it's low. It's not too wide, so it's easy to drive in town. And in fact, it's quite short as well. It's about that much shorter than a Porsche Cayman. It's a great looking stylish car that stands out and I adore it in this blue colour. If you get it, get this blue, it's great. Now the stylish theme, it just continues on the inside as well. The dash is it's kind of curved, it's not too high so you get a good view out. I like the colour coding up here on the door. Now, if you're wondering what the heck this is, it's a little sticker of a cat given to me by my mate's daughter Freya. So there you go Freya, look, a little sticker of the cat is in, in the car video. Sorry to everyone else who's watching this. Um, yeah, let's continue with the car so everything's easy to get to. And I think they've done a really, really good job. However, things aren't quite so good when you start touching them and assessing the quality. So this stuff, yeah, it's plastic, not carbon fiber. The steering wheel center hub, it's all a bit cheap feeling. Also, I kind of wish that they're just an Alcantara all the way around the wheel as well. It would have felt even more sporty. These bits on the wheel are kind of cheapy. I love these grab handles with the contrasting stitching here, but if you touch the door card itself, it's all really cheap plastic. And while I like the fact that they've kind of got like these speakers which have big gaps in them, in some ways, that's quite cheap feeling as well, as are the plastics down here on the lower part of the dash, and you will touch that because you'll want to use the, the actual door mirror controls. Then there's the air vents. They look cool, but they're just cheap and nasty. Move down here, the, the controls for the stereo, they're not great either. And I've got to show you this, look. Centre console wobble, really does wobble. Mm, once again, there's some more cheap carbon fibre down here. And something else my cameraman pointed out, this start button, it's not quite red, it's a sort of orange. Other than that though, you've got this kind of storage area down here and in there you've got your USB connectivity there as well. And there's a 12 volt socket here so you can charge your mobile devices. You can also hook up to the infotainment system as well. Now it doesn't have proper Apple CarPlay or Android Auto but there's some sort of kind of work around that you have to get an app for your phone. The infotainment system itself is only okay. So you can navigate around it all right-ish, but some of the icons that you have to hit are quite small, and that's very difficult to do when you're driving. The satellite navigation system itself isn't the best, but once again, satisfactory, but not necessarily becoming of a car that costs, well, this one in particular, this Premier Edition, costs 50,000 pounds. Hmm. Still, you then look around and you see things like the passenger has their own brace plate for their feet and that is metallic. There's decent metallic pedals. It's a car that you can actually love and you can forgive it for its faults. These say belt seats, they look great and you might be thinking, well, uh, is there much room for me in this car? Well, thankfully there's plenty of adjustment. Look in the steering wheel. And even if you're tall, you should be able to get comfy. You see the managing director of Alpine is six foot seven and he's made sure that this car can fit him. For instance, look, the seats go back quite a long way. I can't even reach the pedals now. And you've got a double bubble roof, so you've got these cutouts, and you can see it on the outside quite well. So there's plenty of headroom in here, so that's all right. What's not so all right, though, is storage. So other than that place down there that I've just showed you, there's no door bins. There is one cup holder here, look, but it's very, very shallow, so if you drive fast, yeah, you'll end up spilling stuff everywhere. There's not even a glove box. Oh, you, look, there's a little place there where you can put your mobile phone, and that is it. And the storage doesn't get any better when you go outside the car. So, word of warning, 
you're going to struggle for luggage space. Yes, there is some storage under the bonnet, but the capacity is only 100 litres and it's very shallow, as you can see. So, yeah, you won't fit a suitcase in there. There's also another 100 litres in the boot, but its shape is even more awkward. Look at this. There you go. That's not ideal, is it? I mean, really, this car is no more practical than a motorcycle. In fact, Alpine could do with creating some panniers for this car, you know, just hanging off the sides. It's narrow enough, you could do that. Yeah, I've got an idea. Maybe you can just use the boot, look, as an air brake, like on a Bugatti Veyron. Now then, it's time for the car wow, five annoying things about this car. There's no cover for the vanity mirror on the driver's sun blind, so when you have it down, you keep on getting reflections of your crotch in the mirror. Cheeky. The button to activate the cruise control is down here on the centre console, right next to the parking brake, rather than up on the steering wheel with the rest of the buttons for the cruise control system. Car boards will insist that this car is called an Alpine because that's how the French say it, much in the same way that they insist on calling a Porsche a Porsche, but they never want to call a Renault a Renault. The steep angle of the windscreen means that you get terrible reflections of the dash in the windscreen, almost like it's a heads-up display, and it's really, really bad if it's sunny. Paddle shifters for the gearbox are fixed on the steering column, and they do extend upwards, which is okay if you're turning left. But if you're turning right, then you can't actually change up without taking your hand off the wheel. It's annoying. Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features to help make up for all this. Here's five. Once again, just like a racing car, the Alpine has all-round double wishbone suspension. And the reason for having that is that when the suspension moves up and down, it keeps the wheel as flat as possible, so you've always got the best contact patch with the ground. This car is very light, so it weighs 1.1 tonnes, which is about 300 kilos less than a Porsche Cayman. Part of the reason for that is that the body's made out of aluminium, but also they've done lots of weight-saving measures. For instance, the rear brake caliper also incorporates the electronic parking brake. Normally they're separate, and they've done that to save 2.5 kilos. Also, those racing seats inside are only 12 kilograms each. The car has a variable steering rack, so it's not too sensitive if you just turn it a bit from centre, but the more you turn the wheel, the increasing amount of the front wheels turn, so it can actually go from lock to lock in just over two turns, so there's not too much wheel twirling when you're taking really tight bends. Just like in a racing car, the engine is mounted in the middle, just behind the seats. It's a 1.8 litre turbo with 250 horsepower, though you will eventually be able to get one with 300 horsepower. Alpine says this car can do 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds, but I'm going to test that out. So I've got my special timing gear up here. I'm going to put the car into sport mode by pressing this button, then press the button again and hold it to put it into track mode. Now I'm going to pull up on both these paddles together, hold those. Launch control is now on, so left foot is on the brake. I'm going to floor the throttle and then release the brake. Let's go. Oh, decent start. There's quite a lot of shove, and that is that. And I have got a time of 4.4 seconds. That's good, that is. Better than I was expecting. Also, what's better than I was expecting is the economy. So I'm averaging 37 miles per gallon at this car. That's through normal driving with quite a bit of town actually this morning. On the motor when you're cruising, it'll do over 40, no problem. This car's lightness, or its lack of weight, is essentially what defines the whole driving experience. They haven't had to fit very stiff suspension. It's actually got quite supple suspension. And so when you're just driving along, it's surprisingly comfy for a sports car. It's not a problem going over speed humps. If you hit a pothole, it won't break your back. And the best bit is, when you're going down a British back road, which are notoriously bad, this thing just seems to manage to tippy-toe over it. It's, it's great the way it feels, and that means you can push it harder. It's not skipping around all over the place. They've nailed it. They've nailed that part of the car. Now, there is a bit of a trade-off for that supple suspension, and it is that the car does lean a little bit more than you think it might do, but it's not bad, and you can feel exactly what it's doing. <laughs> In a way, the way it leans is a bit like how, you know when you get a ski on edge and it just carves through the snow? Well, it's, it's a bit like that. <laughs> also, if you lift off the throttle mid-corner, this thing changes its attitude. It's just so responsive. You can tell exactly what the car is doing beneath you, and the steering, they've, they've nailed the steering. It's progressive, 
and yet you can feel what's going on as well. Unlike something like a Ford Fiesta ST, which they've just made it so super responsive that the car is almost like a housefly, the way it darts about all kind of manically. And on the right day, the right roads, this thing is so much fun. But how about on the wrong days? So, living with it every day. I find the seats quite comfortable. One word of warning is though that you can't recline these buckets, so you have to test them out and make sure you can be happy with how they are. Another thing is when you're cruising along around 70 miles an hour, you get this kind of whining in your ear and that's a little bit annoying. So it's not the plushest thing to travel distances in, but you can definitely make it work if you want to. And if you like your driving thrills, then this is definitely a good car. I'm quite surprised what they did with this. I mean, they could have done what Alpha did with the 4C and completely cock it up, but they haven't. They've got this thing just right. It's such a nice thing to drive. One thing I haven't mentioned yet, the brakes. The brakes are brilliant. So, <laughs> they're strong, they've got feel to them. As for the gearbox, well, I think this car could do with a manual, but Alpine couldn't afford to do both a manual and an automatic, and they went with the automatic. So, it's seven speeds, dual clutch. It's pretty good on the upshift, nice and fast. What it's not so good at is the downshift isn't quite so sharp as in something like a Porsche Cayman. Also, I'll live with the engine. So you put your foot down and there is a bit of turbo lag for a split second as the turbo spools up. But then when it's on boost, it's got lots of thrust and it just keeps on going. It's not manic fast, but it's definitely addictive. And it makes a pretty decent noise. Not intrusive, it's not overly loud. But for a four cylinder, it's pretty good. Now I should point out to you that this car doesn't have a limited slip differential like you might expect a sports car to have. Now the problem with that is that, well, when you're going around a corner and the car leans, the inside wheel has less grip and so the power from the engine just seems to be wasted and spun away by that inside tyre with less grip and you get something called one tyre fire. This car tries to combat though by using the ABS to nibble the brakes of the tyre with the least grip. So it then sends the power back to the one with more grip. I'm gonna say that works now by turning the stability control off, seeing what this car's like for doing donuts. You want the wheel spinning together. Oh yeah, seems to be fine. Seems to be fine. Seems to be working just fine for me. <laughs> yes, that system's good enough. Probably not quite as good as a mechanical limited slip diff, but yeah, better than nothing. Now, for more information and to see how much you can save on a new car, click on the pop-out button in the top right-hand corner of the screen to go to CarWow. So then, what's my verdict on the Alpine A1? 10. Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist it. Okay, so it's not as posh feeling, nor as easy to live with every day as a Porsche Cayman, but it's absolutely brilliant to drive. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, comment on it and share it. Also click on our logo to subscribe to this channel. And if you click on the bottom right hand corner, you can actually watch more of our content. Meanwhile, click over to the right to go to our deals page to see how much money you can save on a new car at CarWow.